in LLP about the meaning, about its features, essentials, and the different governing provisions for the formation of LLP. Uh, then we have discussed that what will be the important features of LLP. Then uh, other than that uh, features, we have discussed in detail the number of partners, designated partners, requirement of deep in number, your limited liability as an important feature of the LLP organization, then incorporation, how the particular organization can be incorporated. And uh, then after that, uh, we have discussed about that when we talk about incorporation, so how the particular form is to be filled and the statement is to be signed by the buyer professional. Then uh, with respect to the registration formality, we have discussed uh, about uh, that uh, uh, we have to give the incorporation document along with the complete details in a proper format to the registrar of companies of the particular area where registered office is to be situated. So therein uh, we have to you know, uh, give the details about uh, the organization itself. So after that, we have discussed that once the LLP is incorporated, the articles of the particular organization would be in form of LLP agreement. And this LLP agreement would carry all the details with respect to day-to-day -day operations and gives the flexibility to the organization as well. If we talk about the form of contribution, so in the organization, we know that there can be the contribution in terms of capital and there the contribution can be in form of tangible assets and intangible assets as well. Other than that, the movable or immovable property can be contributed in form of services. The contribution can be given by the partners in the LLP and the contribution value, monetary value of those contribution will be considered and will be recorded in the books of accounts and will be there in the LLP accounts itself. If we talk about the requirement of maintenance of accounts and annual return, so we are very well aware of that it is a proper legal form of organization having separate legal entity as well. So there the annual accounts have to be maintained and if required, then these to be audited and exemption can be given by the central government only. And if we talk about the filling of annual return, so it is required and if there is a failure, so if it is fa the LLP fail for consecutive five years, so it can be one of the reason for the dissolution of the LLP. And after that, we have also discussed that when we talk about the organization, the decision making is made by the partners in the majority of number and the quorum uh, or majority vote will be there. And all the decisions must be recorded in the minutes of the uh, LLP in 30 days and minutes must be kept and maintained at the register of it itself. And with respect to conversion and winding up and taxation reviews, we'll be discussing in today's class itself. Whistleblower, we have already discussed and if it comes uh, in detail, we'll discuss this in detail as well. And uh, also we have discussed uh, the difference between the three form of ownerships that is company, partnership and LLP. So LLP is the hybrid model of the company and partnership where the professional practice and professional way of working is being taken from a company and the flexibility of operations is taken from the partnership. The major drawback of a company is the uh, lengthy registration procedure, dissolution and the more legal formalities. So these are not there in case of LLP. And the major drawback of partnership is unlimited liability, which is not there in case of LLP. So LLP carries all the good features of a corporate and a partnership as well. So this difference you can prepare very well. We have also covered till now with respect to the LLP agreement, which talks about it's just like a partnership deed between the partners, gives the complete flexibility to the partners, how they are going to carry on the day-to-day -day work and how the uh, you know other activities in the organization will 
take place and if the any of the point or on any of the aspect llp agreement is silent then the schedule 1 of the uh, llp act will be applicable in those cases so it is uh, there can be a question uh, from the first chapter with respect to the llp and its features how it is different from a company and the partnership form then there can be a half question on uh, how do you understand by the llp agreement how llp agreement is designed whether it is like a article of association of the company or not how it is different from the traditional partnership all the uh, these aspects can be asked in the llp agreement then there is a question whether an llp agreement may be altered on the lines of articles of association of a company or not so we say yes that if any changes is have to be made then in that particular case the proper notice and proper procedure is to be followed and the uh, article uh, this uh, particular agreement can be altered as per the time and the requirement at with the consent of all the partners then uh, uh the first schedule we have already covered so not going to give more time on this uh, nature of llp uh, section 3 as a body corporate we have already discussed then section 4 of uh, non applicability of indian partnership act we have covered section 5 about the uh, partners who can be the partners or what is the capacity of partners we have discussed then after that minimum number of partners to maximum no limit but with if it is uh, carrying out individually for more than 6 months and there will be personal liability there there can be a question on designated partners section 7 and uh, the process of uh, consent to be a designated partner is required and two minimum partners should be there so in this particular case when we select the designated partner at least one of them should be resident in india then after that we say that uh, if there are the body corporates or other llp are the uh, uh, partner then that case what are the prerequisites for uh, becoming the designated partner so it will become by an agreement and uh, with by giving the consent in the to be it worked as the designated partner and if a person is uh, suffering from any of the disqualification then in that particular case uh, he cannot become the designated partner if he has not given the prior consent he cannot become the designated partner and if the registrar uh, is, have, we have not given uh, the consent of designated partner in a proper form or prescribed manner of his appointment then uh, in that particular case uh, an individual <coughs> will not be considered as designated partner to be a designated partner your does deep in number is required to be obtained by following a proper form and uh, from the central government then uh, this their uh, deep in number details you have to uh, just understand then about the liabilities of designated partners we have already discussed that they are responsible for all the acts and giving all the details uh, uh, to the registrar and they are going to be the representative of the company body corporate in front of the registration uh, registrar and all the legal formalities and if these uh, legal provisions or there will be any contravention then in that case designated pet partners uh, responsible as mentioned in the act for example filing filing is really required and if no partner is appointed then in that particular case uh, there is 
uh, by uh, I think we have covered this preparation document as well. Yes, we. Ma'am, your voice is very break. Ho rahi hai. Yes, ma'am. From section seven. This thing we have covered, I think. Any one of you, uh, if you actually.